So why would people conform with the group when the group was clearly wrong? Well, some of the participants who conformed a lot thought that they themselves must be wrong. So they relied on the group to give them more accurate information about what they were seeing. This is called informational influence. Some even thought that seeing things differently from the rest of the group meant that there was something wrong with themselves as a person more generally, so they tried to hide the fact that they saw things differently. These people wanted to avoid being ridiculed or socially sanctioned. This is called normative influence. Others didn't want to spoil the results of the study, and some even realised that the group might be wrong or sheep following the leader, or perhaps even suffering from an optical illusion but they went along with the incorrect response anyway. Interestingly, the people who conformed tended to underestimate the extent to which they conformed. So what else is important in producing this conformity? Well, the size of the group mattered. So on this graph, we've got the number of errors that people make on the y-axis as a percentage. So the more errors, the more they're conforming to the group's incorrect response. On the x-axis, we have the number of other people in the group. There was little conformity when there was only one other confederate. As you can see on this figure, when the group consisted of just the real participant and one confederate, there was almost no conformity. When there were two confederates, conformity increased to 13.6% of the incorrect trials. When there was a majority of three, it increased again to 31.8%. After this, the rate of conformity did not increase so much. Conformity was also reduced when participants were able to give their responses in private so that the rest of the group couldn't see their answer. Likewise, when there was at least one other person who disagreed with the group's incorrect answer, conformity went down again. Having another person disagree with the group's answer, even if they disagreed with the actual participant as well, also helped to reduce the effect of the group to only 25% of what it was before. Interestingly, the pressure for conformity has a bigger effect in some cultures compared to others. Smith and Bond conducted a meta-analysis. A meta-analysis is a type of study where you look at a large number of previous studies and compare the size of the effect of something like conformity and see how it changes as a function of other factors. This helps us to get an idea about how big an effect is, how consistent it is, and what sorts of things influence it. What Smith and Bond did is look at a large number of studies using the ASH paradigm that we've just described, and these studies came from a range of samples in different cultures. There were studies from the United States of America that were conducted by ASH, other studies from the USA conducted by other researchers, studies conducted in other Western cultures, and also studies conducted in non-Western cultures. So here are the results. On the y-axis is the size of the conformity effect. Bigger numbers mean more conformity. The sample type is on the x-axis. The circle indicates the average size of the effect, and the lines above and below the circle are how much variation there is in the size of the effect. The larger the lines above and below the mean, the more differences there were in the amount of conformity for studies in those samples. That's a lot to take in, but it's actually quite a simple conclusion. What they found was that North American and Western European participants generally conform less than those participants from Eastern cultures, and this may reflect the nature of socially appropriate behaviour in each culture. Western cultures tend to emphasise individual autonomy and that people are responsible for their own behaviour, while Eastern cultures tend to emphasise interdependence between people and the importance of social relationships and cooperation.